Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures and today well it's all about trying to fix a problem. We have leggy seedlings and this problem arises a lot when we first start out doing seeds. Pop them on windowsills early in the year which we are here still in February uh, with some heat around them and a little bit of low level light. Even though we have light it's not good growing light and they become really leggy. How do we stop them becoming leggy and can we rescue them? It's all about temperature and light. So join me in a moment inside the greenhouse yet again where we look at how we can fix leggy ceilings. It's great to have you on board. I hope you're sitting comfortably. I hope you've got your feet up and have a copper in hand. Welcome to Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. <music> So again, back to basics with how we grow on from seeds our plants. Now, in here, which is my, of course, my little um, muffin tray, it's been in my windowsill near the radiator. So it's had heat and light constantly. Um, and what's happened is, which happens quite a lot actually, uh, when you first start producing seeds, and I've let these go. I saw them go in a week, and I thought, I'm just going to let them go because it's really interesting then how we can fix it. And can we fix it? Well, yes, we can. They've had lots of heat and light. Now, they need now to be put in a bit of a shock mode. Um, we need to recreate as though they're growing outside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave them in the greenhouse here, not inside this, just in the normal greenhouse. It's quite warm in here, but not overly warm. And we're going to give them a little bit more water and then we're going to keep a close eye on them. And hopefully cold temperature will stop them shooting up they'll start going down into the soil producing stronger stems and stronger leaves at the moment these lettuce here um, aren't producing their second leaves they've only on their first leaves and a lot of them are weak if i watered them now um, they'd probably all just collapse into the soil i'm going to have to do that anyway because they do need a bit more water in here you can eventually in say a week's time once they've been in here and they've established themselves in the cooler temperature in here we can start transplanting into other pots and once again you need a good instrument to do it now I've <laughs> I was given this a little uh, but that's too big it will disturb all the roots so basically you take something like a pencil and very carefully around the base of your plant now what you have to do is once again carefully hold them by the leaves at the top and then work around the roots at the bottom, not disturbing too much. Don't pull. You have to find the base of the roots. And funny enough, look how big and how strong and weak that is. I say strong and weak because actually they have forced themselves through the soil. What you can do then, in fact, this, this is really good stuff to do it. Put a little bit of the soil into the bottom and then you get a little bit more and you hold very gently and you just very carefully drop the compost around the stems. Now you can do this really successfully with uh, tomatoes. They don't mind that at all because of course, as we know, tomatoes can send roots out from their stems. Now there's a little lettuce seed transplanted. It's as simple as that, but you've got to be really, really careful. But really I should have waited another week uh, for these to be a uh, naturally um, growing here in the allotment so we're going to leave that so i'll say if you've got leggy seedlings take them away from the heat now put them somewhere cooler in a greenhouse or even uh, in a, 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 a heatless room if you've got one maybe a conservatory or even a cold frame that would be really useful uh, we have more natural light now coming what's interesting is these have been next door to them on on the same place and they're growing rather nicely. We've got our tarragon here and we've got our basil at this side. The basil is looking really good. Some of the tarragon a little leggy, but now it's in here and it will start to slow down. These will become really nice plants. There's quite a few, so they're going to have to be transplanted shortly. And, uh, well, 
that will help those to become really nice plants. The other thing you can do is introduce natural air movement. Uh, generate a little bit of wind or if you if you haven't got a, a spare fan knocking around and I've got one somewhere I must find it you can pop that on and just put a gentle breeze across your plants if you can't do that every time you go past your plants give them a little blow because that will say to them they need to become stronger plants now what's beautiful in here and it's about time we started to transplant these two. I'm going to get a little bit of compost in the bottom of here because look what's happening. I'm going to use my very carefully because the, the roots on these are amazingly long already. You don't want to damage any of them. Here we go. Oh. If I can, <laughs> I try not to cut off the bottom end of this root. I'll dig my fingers down in here. And uh, well, what can I say? I'll take a thick picture and let's see if I can hold that. This is my beautiful, beautiful pea. And look at the length of that stalk. In fact, I don't think this little pot here is big enough. So I'm going to very carefully now go and find a bigger pot and we can get that into that. We can also just pull that one out and we'll get that little lettuce into another pot. But that's looking really, really good. This is a pea and uh, well, it's, I think it's really enjoyed being where it is. We have another one coming. I'll get that out of there. And I think there's a couple more down the sides, but that is in about two weeks growth for our lovely peas. Isn't that amazing? Well, the sun's coming out. So I've escaped from the greenhouse and I thought I'd start a job that, I, well, I put off a few days due to the weather. I bought myself a raised planter. And uh, that's brilliant. And it's in this box, actually. Let me see. Oh, it's, there you go. That's, uh, that's the outer rims. It's, uh, they have two of those, and they go like that to make the edge of it. And we've got some straight panels, too, which is just amazing. It is metal, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And, uh, you know, it's great. It's a little deep, but we're going to talk about that once I've constructed this, about what we fill it with. Because you can put some natural things in, which will slowly rot down over time and really help whichever seeds, whichever plants you put in here, from flowers to vegetables to herbs. I'm very, very excited about it. I can't wait to see it built. See you in a short while. Well, I'm filming on a different day and uh, due to time constraints, I couldn't film yesterday. Beautiful day yesterday. But today, well, it's not so beautiful. High winds and lots and lots of heavy duty rain. However, as gardeners, we're out in all weathers. I've been out in snow before now, uh, but you still have to carry on doing the work because without that, the weeds will start and everything will get ahead of themselves. Now, I'm here with my built growing frames. Uh, before I put them down properly, they're not really installed at the moment. I've got some um, loose netting and it's got very, very tiny holes in. And this is instead of weed control because really we don't need weed control fully at the bottom of these. Uh, because in the moment it's going to be darkness anyway because it'll be filled with lots of things. So this will go in just to stop things coming up from underneath. And these, as you probably, I don't really remember or not, I got these from a, a store. And there was something ridiculous like £2 for a packet. And these are two metres by a metre, so they're brilliant. Anyway, they will be laid underneath to prevent things coming through. And also give them a firm bedding. I love these. They're amazing. They cost £30 each, which I think is a bargain. And, uh, well... What do you do with them? They are beautiful, they're amazing planters, they're sturdy, made of steel, and uh, it's a big bugbear of mine. When you get something this deep, the manufacturers don't give you any uh, shelving to put inside. It'd be great if there was a shelf about this far down, and even just a couple of batons across, and I might actually try and do that myself, get some old sticks of wood, because these have um, got lovely dints in, so you could easily force in either side. Before I do that, what do you put in the bottom? Well, I'm going to use old sticks. I've got plenty lying around here on the allotment because every season we chop lots of branches off uh, the trees here and the bushes around. Now these, you just place in the bottom of here like that. And these organic. Now, what you have to be careful of, anything that you put in the bottom of these, so I'll pop that in there as well while I'm talking, um, has to be natural. Don't put um, anything such as, uh, what well, we've got here, we are in front of me, decking because obviously that, that's been treated. And over time, all that treatment will seep into the soil that you're gonna put in here. And it could affect your organic status if you're organic. 
Um, these are just naturally untreated. They used to be lovely um, dividers. Uh, they've gone now, but they're totally untreated. Well, they can go in, and uh, so can all of these go in. Now, be very, very careful. Obviously, if you've had plants that are infected, don't pop them in here. They need burning or bagging and taking to your local tip. Build that up as much as you can. And then what I'm going to try and do, as I say, I'm going to try and build sort of a shelf area, make it really compact, as much as you can anyway. You can put all sorts in and then add a layer of cardboard to the top of it. Now, once again, the cardboard has to be as pure as it possibly can. Don't put stuff in that's got lots of printing on, lots of pictures on it because again, that could seep out and could affect what you've grown inside here. We know they're in small, tiny amounts, but even so, if you can get pure brown cardboard, fantastic, stick it in. We know it's put together with some sort of glues, that's difficult as well, but really, cardboard in there should be fine. Okay, we'll be all right. I've got lots of uh, leaf mold, that'll go in the bottom too, and it's creating a really good environment. On top, of course, then, we put beautiful, brand new compost. You can fill it up with old soil if you've got some lying around. So I'm going to go around my allotment here and get as much stuff into these two as I can over the next few days. And then we'll see the results in the next video. Well, I think I'm wet enough. I'm going to go into the greenhouse now. And we'll see how the seedlings are going since we transplanted them the other day. Well, here I am back in the safety of the greenhouse. And, uh, well, I'm not getting wet anymore, as you can tell. Uh, but I still have my waterproof leggings on. Yes, it's been that bad. I've had to wear waterproof leggings. I don't normally. Anyway, what's been happening here since we were last here? Well, I've set up my grow light system um, for my little seedlings that we had to transplant, you remember? And all this is, it's a fluorescent tube with a lovely shiny uh, metal con um, construction here and it throws light downwards, which is what you need, obviously. This is a very high spectrum fluorescent tube. Uh, you have uh, lots of different colours in fluorescent tubes. You can have warm white, you can have cool white, you can have daylight. This is a 6400K light, which means it's more of a daylight light. It tries to replicate pure daylight. And that's really, really good for growing because it helps very slowly then for these plants. They're in a cool environment, they see the light and they slowly start to grow. They're not shooting up in the warmth of the house anymore towards the light. They're growing upwards and naturally which really, really helps. They're worth the investment if you can afford it. They're all different colours, so be very careful. Look at what you want. If you want a pure growing light, as I say, you need to go towards the daylight bulbs, the natural daylight. Um, when you walk into buildings, you might have noticed sometimes different lights and different intensities. And uh, well, it has started to change with the introduction of LED lighting. Um, but this sort of grow light really, really works well. And uh, yes, the ones I transplanted the other day, the seedlings, they're coming along nicely. They're taken to this compost and it's just that uh, coconut compost that I've used. And I, I know we had a little discussion on the comments the other day. Thank you for that. It's really interesting, uh, all of different people's views about how good this is. I'm finding at the moment, and this is just my experience, I'm talking yet again from my experience here in the greenhouse, that whatever I've put into this coconut koi uh, is growing beautifully. Uh, all the seeds I've, I've put in there this year have come up and I'll send you a picture of what's growing in behind me because we've got all those different varieties of seeds, haven't we? We've got cauliflowers, cucumbers, not cucumbers, take that back, cauliflowers. <laughs> Two sets of cauliflowers. Broccoli, that's what I meant to mention. Uh, the melons not yet coming through but they might need a little more warmth. I may have to isolate those in a while. Uh, but yes, we'll take a look at that and uh, as I say, here's a photograph of more coming through now, which is amazing. They are on a heat mat. I do come down and make sure they're watered because you don't want it obviously all to evaporate and then the seeds have no way of germinating. And as you know, when you're planting your seeds and sowing your seeds, don't put them down too deep. Because if you do, they may not survive. And the reason I say that is in the seed itself, I think we talked about it before, in the seed itself is its own little nutrients to get itself growing. So once it starts growing and pushing the roots out and the little lovely stalks and stems towards the light here, like, like my pea here in the middle. When they start coming up here, well, it stops taking nutrients from the seed and starts taking nutrients from the soil. But if they're too deep and all they've got to feed on is that seed and they can't quite get up and they can't get down, then they'll just rot in the soil. So don't plant them too low and a very light capping of soil on top. And fingers crossed, you'll have the successes 
that I've had this year. Brilliant. Well, it's great to have all the new subscribers on board and I'm very, very excited. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. Can you believe it? You've all been with me through thick and thin over the last few years. You're all still with me, still getting beautiful comments from you. But don't forget, from now on, if you want to send photographs through, and I love, from now on in, uh, for you to send photographs, go to, send them to my website. Uh, sorry, my um, website. I wish I had a website. Wouldn't that be amazing? My email address, address is just below. Jez grows, one word, at outlook.com. Jez grows at outlook.com. It's in the ticket tape underneath. And thank you for all being on board. I can't wait for the next show because we may have topped a thousand subscribers. Fantastic. Now, before I go, I've had a little question from Steve in Derbyshire. And it's a very unusual question. Steve's been part of this channel ever since it started. He's been a, a major contributor over the years. And he's, he's had plots in different... He used to have a lovely plot in his... Well, during lockdown, he converted his grass into an allotment site, dug it all up and planted veg and stuff. Very, very successful. And now he's actually renting a space in somebody else's back garden. What a brilliant idea. However, he's having trouble with badgers. He's lost all sorts. He's lost carrots. In fact, I think, Steve, you said you've lost most of the things you've planted over the years. He wants advice. Do anybody out there, because he's tried it all. He's tried fencing, netting, all sorts of things, and they've got through to eat his vegetables. I'm sorry, Steve, I don't mean to laugh, but what a task. If anybody out there knows how to prevent badgers safely, we don't want them killing off, we don't want them hurting or anything, safely, then please let us know. Send some comments in. You can send comments, of course, to the email address, jazzgrows at outlook.com, or you can just put them in the comments. I would love to hear from you, and I know Steve would in Derbyshire. Steve, thank you once again for your, your lovely comment. It's great to have you all on board once more, and I look forward to your comments. So cheers from here on Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. Ta-da for now. Thank you.